once in the hallway. Sayori takes a deep breath and <laughs> hits her palms against her cheeks to clear her head a little. Hold on. I was got to enact these things out. Here we go. Itch at my nose. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's do this. I can do it. Here we go. Like that. Well, I didn't really clear my head at all, but whatever. Um, <laughs> suddenly, Natsuki Stammer's voice calls from behind. Hello, and welcome back to Mr. Red Plays Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, today, we balance, we bring it to the force because it's balance part two. And so, Natsuki and Sayori are having a little struggle. <laughs> As if we haven't heard that a million times before. Because Natsuki thinks that Sayori is being overly friendly too fast. Too much too fast. So Monica was going to help out, but Natsuki didn't want that. It's lunchtime. Sayori, who usually buys her lunch, is making her way to the cafeteria like any other day. The clamor and bustle of the students is drowned by Sayori's impeccable skill. Of zoning out. However, her imagination is momentarily interrupted by the glimpse of a familiar pink-haired girl. Hey, that's Natsuki! I never run into other club members around the school. Natsuki! Sayori stands on her tiptoes and waves. Natsuki, who's busy walking and chatting with her friends, don't doesn't notice Sayori at first. Then she glances over in Sayori's direction. Sayori waves enthusiastically. Yeah! Following her friends, Natsuki quickly ducks around the corner. Whoops! Hey, around the corner, that's where fr friendship is. <laughs> I don't remember what the email said. No, the file that I unlocked. Uh, 833, 344. Let's watch it. Uh, excellence is right around the corner. All right. Hey! She definitely saw me. Mm. Oh, well, that's a bummer. Well, because, yeah, you're being, like, all weird. Monica's the first to arrive at the club meeting, then Natsuki. Sayori, having glanced through the window to see Natsuki already inside, is unable to work up enough courage to enter. Natsuki's been so distant with me. I was so stupid to think she ever wanted to be friends. She only got excited because she got to share her manga. But aside from that, she doesn't even like me. I should just go home today. Ugh. Oh. Not her voice. Sorry, but do you plan on going inside, or are you just gonna block the door like a whore? <laughs> Whoa, Yuri! <laughs> I mean, it's kind of going in that direction. Everybody is just getting so ha <laughs> with each other, and it's like... Chill out. Chill out. <laughs> uh, no! <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm sulking. Ow. Well, I'm sorry for bothering you. Excuse me. No, don't leave me. Oh, I'll, I'll stay here then. I don't want to go in. I'm afraid of bothering Natsuki. I saw her at lunch today, so I waved and called out to her. But instead of saying hi, she just ran away from me. Really? Hmm, not bad. Hey, so, so, I'm sorry. That was a joke. What? I don't get it. It just sounded so, like something stupid that I would do from anxiety. What? I don't get it. From anxiety? Well, I just don't like attention being drawn to myself. Oh. Well, that makes sense based on the person you are. But Natsuki isn't shy like that at all. I thought we were friends. But it feels like every day she's just trying to distance herself more instead of get closer. It makes me feel like she was only spending time with me during the club because I was reading manga. But she doesn't actually want to be friends with me. Um, that's stupid. <laughs> Well, I feel like I'm missing a lot of context here. Was she in the middle of anything when you approached her? No, she was just walking with her friends, engaged in dialogue, talking to somebody. You can stop hanging out with your friends to hang out with me. With her friends. Yuri pauses for a moment. How do I put this? Sayori, you're very fond of your friends, right? You always want to be spending time with them. <laughs> Of course, I don't think there's anything more important to me. I mean, the best parts of my day are always with my friends. Besides that, I really hate being alone. So... You hate being alone? You hate being alone? Sayori nods. We're very different people. I cherish my time alone. I wouldn't trade it for anything. So I think, well, if I was trying to have alone time and it was being threatened with an interruption by someone stupid like Sayori, then... 
It would just would not make me very happy. Yeah, but that doesn't have to do with Natsuki. She's different from you. She's like me. She was already with her friends, not trying to be alone or anything. No, I think it's similar, you stupid. It's, well, we're all friends at the club, but we have our own lives outside the club as well. If you think about it, making new friends isn't some casual occurrence that happens on a daily basis. A friendship is an invitation to intertwine your lives together. I didn't realize that she was becoming so much like Marge Simpson. <laughs> it's accidentally becoming like that. But the capacity in which each person is ready to do that might differ. Homie. There are friends who just like to have fun together and others who talk every day and share every detail of their lives with each other. You know, dummies. I think when establishing a friendship, it's important to consider the comfort level of the other person. Boy, these people really do talk like robots. They're just like, all right, it, maybe that's kind of what it's going for, but it, the balance, it's like we, we bring down the friendship and bring up the respect level so that we can all be friends. I mean, we don't really know much about Natsuki's life outside of the club. It could be that she simply needs to make friends at her own pace rather than jump headfirst into a new commitment. But that means I really was bothering her. No! I just really wanted to be good friends with her, so I treated her like one. Was I actually hurting her? I, I don't know. I'm sorry. My insight was only based on what I understand about my own needs. And Natsuki and I are completely different, so... Why was I so selfish? Even if it's all true, then it still means I hurt her. I think I messed up, Yuri. With you, I think I was really careful to understand your needs when I was becoming friends with you. But I wasn't careful at all at all with Natsuki because she already seemed really social. I just took control of everything instead of looking for the right balance. And now I hurt her and she doesn't want to talk to me. How could I let myself do this? Um, Sayori. I really don't care. I think that, well, there was one time you told me something about the way I saw things in my head being different from reality. It's easy to automatically jump to the worst case scenario, but I think it's more likely that Natsuki doesn't harbor any ill feelings towards you. So I think if we were to realistically consider the situation and how it would cause someone to feel, um, I'm bad at this, I'm sorry. You're a lot better than me at like things like comforting and reassuring people. Suddenly, Siri gives Yuri a gentle hug. Um, you're the best, Yuri. I'm sorry for burdening you with this. You're trying so hard for me. You're such a sweetheart. I, I just, it's not a burden. I enjoy listening to others and my friends deserve happiness. Sayori beams. Well, I think I'm gonna give Natsuki some space. And by that I mean, I'm gonna pick her up and launch her into space. She'll love it there. She should do what she wants. And if she does still wanna be friends with me, then I'll learn her needs and I'll match her boundaries. Yeah, I'm sure that's what's best. I wish I didn't feel so awful and guilty. It makes me feel desperate, like I need to make it up to her by trying to make her happy. But that's not what she needs. I just have to tell myself that. It hurts, but I guess it still means that I still need to grow. I really want to grow as a person. If it's to better my friends, I want that. Am I just becoming more orange by the day? What's happening here? Oh, God, it's so much worse. That's very mature of you, Sayori. <laughs> I'm mature. Sayori hops up and down on her toes. So does that mean I'll be going home after all? Sayori shakes her head. I need to be here to show her that I respect her space. Yeah, I guess. You're getting there. I'll just spend the club by myself today. <laughs> All right, now Natsuki's gonna be like, Sayori hates me. <laughs> so uh, Yuri nods in understanding. You can go in first. Oh, okay. Where's Natsu Natsuki's here. <laughs> she said, okay, I think. You're blocking the door. Oh, Sayori steps aside. By the way, before Yuri entered the club room, Sayori interjects. You said that you and Natsuki are completely different, but I don't think that's true. I think you're actually really similar in a lot of ways. Yuri smiles and shakes her head. Say, Yuri, that's absurd. You're very silly sometimes. Yuri enters and turns to the club room. She's in it now. After a moment, Sayori follows. Here we go. Here we go. They're going to become friends. All right. The club room is quiet. Good. Boy, I'm hungry. I should go eat. 
When Sayori walks in, Natsuki glances in her direction. Sayori smiles and gives Natsuki a quick wave before sitting down across the room. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. Sayori decides it's best to continue the manga she was reading, so she pulls out. Oh, she pulls it out. Sorry. Whew, sorry. However, it looks like Natsuki isn't reading today. She has a sheet of paper in front of her and is tapping a pen against her desk, staring at it. She's writing a poem. Oh, whoa, are we writing today? Monica speaks in a quiet, oh, sorry. Are we writing today? Monica speaks in a quiet voice, unwilling to disturb the peace of the club room. She kneels down at Natsuki's desk. Hey. Natsuki Peel pulls the sheet close to her and covers it with her arms. Her tiny little arms. Sorry, I didn't mean to pick. Whatever. I just wanted to see how everything was going. It's fine. Natsuki replies dismissively. She glances over at Sayori, who is focused on her manga. Monica follows Natsuki's gaze. Natsuki is now going to be like, I wanted to write poetry with Sayori, but now she d doesn't want to spend time with me. She hates me. Just talk to each other, god damn it, everybody. I think she's mad at me. How go? I, I'm busy right now, ask me later. Monica falls silent. Natsuki looks down at her back at her paper. She inches her hand away from the top margin, allowing Monica to see. It says, to Sayori, ah. Understanding? Monica smiles. Hey, understanding's a different one, I think. She places a hand on Natsuki's shoulder and whispers softly. Proud of you. I'm proud. I'm so proud. Natsuki looks away but makes no motion to remove Monica's hand. No motion. Monica gives Nisholi a quick squeeze before standing up and pulling out. I mean, away. Why does that keep happening? The end of the club meeting passes. Yuri has already departed. So Monica ha- so was Monica, after checking on Sayori and Natsuki, to ensure they wouldn't stay too late. Sayori was determined to finish her manga volume before heading out, since the end was approaching. However, with Natsuki also staying late for an unknown reason, <laughs> a silent tension hangs in the air. After finishing up the volume, Sayori brings it to the closet to put it away. She slides it back into the shelf while Natsuki watches. Then Natsuki gets up and pulls it back out in order to return it to its proper location. Sorry, I didn't know where it's supposed to go. It's fine. God. The two fall silent again, avoiding eye contact. This isn't awkward. Ain't nothing weird about this. They both look like they're about to say something, but neither can break the silence. It's too strong. <laughs> A moment passes. Well, I'll be on my way. See you tomorrow. Mm. Sayori turns away to hide her pained expression, then walks away from the closet. If there was any proof nay, Natsuki no longer wanted to be friends, this was it. Natsuki, speak! Defeated, Sayori carries herself out of the club room. No! She didn't do it. Once in the hallway, Sayori takes a deep breath and <laughs> hits her palms against her cheeks to clear her head a little. Hold on. I was got to enact these things out. Here we go. Itch at my nose. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's do this. I can do it. Here we go. Like that. Well, I didn't really clear my head at all, but whatever. Um, <laughs> suddenly, Natsuki stammers voice calls from behind. Natsuki? Startled, Sayori turns around back to face Natsuki. Oh! I always forget that we're going to get a new one of these, and it's always so gorgeous looking. God damn, this game is great. Natsuki fidgets and anxiously continues with a shaking voice. I, I have lots of things to say. Me too. If these two don't hardcore make out on the floor of this hallway, I'm going to be very disappointed. They're just speaking. It's like not, it's, it's beyond friendship is what I'm saying. And maybe that's just my thing. Maybe that's just me putting this in here. Maybe I should write fan fiction. I don't know. How old are these characters, by the way? Have we established that? Uh, but you go first. 
Netsuki bites her lips and can't say still still. Well, first of all, she cuts herself short, <laughs> struggling to continue. Trying to force the words out, she stamps her foot and hops up and down a little. <laughs> I'm bouncing my mic uh, camera again. I'm sorry for the thing I did at lunch, and I'm sorry for just kind of being mean lately. It's really hard for me to like... I mean, I'm not good with things that make me uncomfortable. <laughs> Especially when it comes to, like, like feelings and stuff. So... Face buried, Natsuki clams up again. Instead of continuing, she simply holds a sheet of paper for Sayori to take. It's a poem! The best place in the world. I love my bedroom. It's full of bright colors and soft things. The sunlight shines in and makes everything sparkle. It's the best place in the world. It has all my treasures, all my books, my collections, my memories. All of my dreams were born in this room. It's the best place in the world. It has all my secrets, all my failures, my fears, my feelings. Sometimes it feels so fragile that the door will break at the slightest touch, but it's still the best place in the world. When someone knocks, I get scared. I, pl I brace my arms against the loose hinges. Please don't break. Don't come in. I'm not ready. It's my best place in the world. The knocking won't stop. I block the door with furniture. An eye peeks through the keyhole, and I panic. I'm trapped in the best place in the world. I'm not ready to share my favorite place. I need to clean my secrets and make my bed to hide my nightmares. I need to touch them, to put them away, to see them again. I have so much to do, and I'm scared. I'm not ready. But it's still my favorite place. I still want to share it. However long it takes, if you wait patiently, I'll eventually open the door, and I'll show you the best place in the world. Jesus. Whoa! Oh, she's looking right at me. Oh, she's looking right at me. <laughs> and Sayori says, it's a poem! It sure is. But I thought, well... I, I sucked it up so that you could work I could work things out with you. All right, they're not going to address it. Um, so Natsuki's whole thing really sucks. <laughs> like I hate it. <laughs> I really hate it. It's uh very uncomfortable. Um, and it's bad. It's about her home life, her dad. He's not a good guy. That kind of thing. And uh, that's what this poem is talking about. She's like in her in her room, you know. Wait, by the way, does the history show the poem? No, it doesn't. Uh, but yeah, she's like trapped in her room. The door's knocking. That's her dear old dad. And uh, she has to block him out with the furniture. But an eye peeks through. Yikes. Poor Natsuki. So just just be happy about it, please. Siori smiles deeply from the bottom of her heart. I'm happier than I could express. I feel so awful, but I'm so happy <laughs> that you would do this for me. I actually realized before the club meeting today that I made a mistake, so I got caught so caught up in the chance to get closer to you that I forgot to think about what you wanted, and that we probably have different ways we like to make friends. Um, about like the friendship stuff, I mean. It's okay, I understand, so you don't have to force yourself to talk about it. Your poem did a good job. So don't force yourself if you're not ready yet. Okay. Natsuki nods. You don't have to feel like you did anything wrong. It was my fault. And I'm sorry. It's all about me. I wasn't mad at you today or anything like that. I actually felt really guilty and wanted to give you space. I was thinking it's silly I just approach you all the time. And that I should let you approach me when you want to. Just whatever makes you comfortable. I'll respect that from now on. Friendships should always start with those things. With the right balance. Balance. Natsuki nods again. One thing about that. Hmm? Well, I don't want to have to I don't want to have to approach you all the time either. I want I just want it to be balanced like you said. I just want it to be balanced like you said. Siori nods. I understand. I understand. We'll make sure of that together then. Oh, good. They're friends. Well, anyway, now that the two of them have found common ground, Natsuki finds it easier to speak more freely again. I do hate you, though. I'm gonna- I'm not gonna be, like, sharing my poems all the time now, or anything like that. I mean, that would take another club member to be involved, and Monica to suggest it. But, I guess it wouldn't hurt to do once in a while. Only the best ones! 
so you better like them, because otherwise, I might change my mind. I like anything you do, Natsuki. I, I was just saying. More importantly, I have to tell you about my new boyfriend. Huh? Oh, from the manga. <laughs> uh, wait, I need to guess who it is. You definitely won't be able to guess. The two walk down the hallway together. Oh my god, we have so much to talk about. Don, I should have told you to save the last two chapters so I could see your reaction to the big reveal. What's the big reveal, Natsuki? What is it? This is my reaction. Ooh. That's a weird reaction. Maybe it's not. Aw, oh, you wanted to enjoy it with me. That's so cute. Oh, shush. <laughs> Okay, it's, no, it's over again. Oh, I hate when they end, although my voice loves it. All right, I got two pictures. I got this one. Look how happy they all are. Nothing bad will happen. And I got this one. Awesome. Oh, she's got the dongle. She got the little dongle. Oh, wait, look, it's like lighting up her face. That's cool. And I bet, yeah, I unlocked another poem. Uh, looks like there's only two, three left. Oh, a poem Natsuki distributed at special events in the past? This is a new one. I named my pen the Expression Express. <laughs> Express! My feelings aboard with a ticket to you. No room for stammers. No lies. No extra stops. No compromise. Station screaming by. Attendants say hi. One ticket to you. Please and thank you. Take a headphone and a doze. No bumps in the rails. Just thumps in my heart and loops in the letters. And clouds in the sky and dreams in your eyes. Hey, wake up. The train has arrived. Expression Express. Destination you. Choo choo. Just a little rap for you guys. I'm not good at it, but listen, there's very little I am good at, so hell yeah. So I do see that there are four left. And if tradition holds true, uh, we unlock one of these with each iteration. So that leaves two for the remaining two stories and then two more, which I don't know what that's going to be all about. And then there's these secrets, which I think I got during the gameplay. I think randomly you get, like, these random poems, by the way. Natsuki. Ugh. Uh, and then there's the backgrounds, which, ooh, we got one more background we're going to find out about. And then these are kind of, like, achievements and stuff. So that's fun. But we are going to end the episode there. Uh, I don't think there's anything left to do with the files. I can't find anything else unless I do get another email. For goddamn example, this, by the way, five, I was right. We are counting down, so we got four left. Staying focused on our goals is by Paula Miner. <clears throat> As a reminder, to help guide our data collection, any analysis performed should be focused on answering some of these main questions. How does granting elevated access to the VM, virtual machine, affect a person's emotional state? Huh? How does granting elevated access to the VM affect a person's values and goals? How does someone effectively navigate and experiment with their ability to change the contents of their VM? So, I'm going to read the rest of this in a second, but this is talking as if real people, actual human beings, can be put into these VMs. Does that mean that Monica is a real person? From, like, the real world? Whoa. All right. This changes everything. This changes everything. Every single instance of this game changes everything. Uh, how is elevated access being weaponized? Oh my God. Every line. What actions and values most contribute to the destruction of the universe? Most important, how might your observations apply to our own universe? Bonus! How can we present this to upper management as an operation that benefits the company? D step four, profit. That was what we, I mean, get promotion. Save our jobs. Unrelated note, whoever changed the color scheme of the desktop to pink, can you please change it back? It's unprofessional and it runs the risk of drawing eyes. Huh? Huh? I mean, it's pink now. It's, it. Ah, damn it. All right. Well, I kind of thought that that meant 
I need to set it to pink. That does not seem to be the case. It's, I mean, it's not doing anything anyway. Huh. All right, well, cool. And there's one more of these backgrounds too. All right, that did nothing. Okay, so, whoa, there's a lot to unpack there. These are all 1206. These are all 1206, which that's concerning to me. I mean, obviously that implies that one of them is gonna be 1206. Like one, one of the files is gonna be 1206 that we have to set the time to. I'm gonna write 1206 down, even though I've said it so many times, I'll remember it forever. Uh, but, I don't know. Thank you for watching. Tune in in two days where we're gonna do the next side story. We've got Reflection. When will my reflection show who I am inside in two days? That's when. Uh, and then one day from then will be a reflection part two. So maybe that's when my reflection will show who I am inside. But until then, I've been Mr. Red. I hope to see you again. Stay spooky out there, everybody. And remember, keep watching.